All you need is a bit of soap and just rub it in with your knuckles. Get all the skid marks out. Oh! You're <laughs> making me feel so ill. This one is from Dr. Max. Dear William and Jordan, I'm writing to you for advice and also hope I find some closure from the embarrassment I'm currently feeling. A doctor wants advice from us. Yes. We don't know if it's a medical or academic. Oh. But, hey, you know. Imagine being on a plane. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Oh, no, I can't tell you because I'm in... Let's just say <laughs> yeah. the journey to Skegness, the plane to Skegness. Yes. Right? We had... I'm not even joking. We had... Um, a fight with a family, full on fight. They had someone smoking in the toilets and we had a lady who had a heart attack. But can you imagine if you're on a plane wow. and someone's having an heart attack and you go, is there a doctor on board? And someone puts their hand up and he's like, yeah, I'm only a doctor in media studies. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, well, well, put your hand down, you dickhead. Is anyone else? Is there a proper doctor on board? But I can help the airline crisis manage the situation. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a professor in science. Oh, well, no, we need a proper doctor. No offence to any professors. You need to tell us more. Can Next week, can you tell us more about the fight? I, I was, you know, I, I wasn't on the plane. It was on the train. Anyway, shut up. Move on. OK. Uh, right, back to Dr Max's letter. Usually I'm a fan of a small flat white coffee, but this morning I was feeling very wintry, so bought a sugary, chocolatey monstrosity before boarding my two-hour train. I'm really into flat whites at the moment. Are you? Yeah. Coming up, Ben. Within the first five seconds of boarding the train, I managed to trip over. Well, I'm not sure what. Thin air, I suppose. Sadly for the nice man sitting in the first class compartment, I lost grip of my drink in the panic of the trip. I'm unsure if I unintentionally added extra velocity into the flight of the coffee in my mid-trip flapping, but either way, I launched the whole coffee, thankfully it wasn't too hot, right in the face of the aforementioned gentleman. Mm. Almost in slow motion, I saw the cup hit him, crumble, the lid pop off, and the chocolatey milky contents erupt, and somehow managed to cover him from both chin up and chin down simultaneously. He has been quite gracious, considering, but we are now sat <clears throat> sit opposite each other, potentially for the next two hours. What should I do? I have ruined the first class compartment with a rather unpleasant, damp, milky coffee smell, not to mention the man's clothes. Thankfully, he was dressed casually and not in a suit. I, of course, have offered to pay for his dry cleaning, but do I stay in the compartment? Do I flee to standard class or get off the train completely? It has even crossed my mind that, as he is the one covered in milk, which presumably will begin to turn rather quickly given mm. the heat of the train, maybe he should be the bigger person and leave himself. <laughs> Thanks, a latte in advance for your advice. Like it. Yours sincerely, Dr Max. Dr Max, uh, first of all, no, you've done the right thing there, offering to do the dry cleaning. Absolutely. Um, and I don't think you should move, especially the trains these days, because you probably won't get a seat. But I, I'll never forget this, right? Mm. Ever forget this. Did you ever used to watch The Real Hustle on BBC Three? No. Right, so there was a programme called The Real Hustle. Yes. There was, really? There was, there was <laughs> Thanks hustle. for looping me in. There was Hustle on BBC One. Yes, I'm aware of Hustle. And then about some hustlers, but The Real Hustle was about some real-life form of hustlers. scammers. Right? right. And there was this one scam that I think was genius. Don't do it, but you won't be able to do it now. <laughs> so this the guy, and it was done around London for years, a guy used to go, go into a cafe and say, oh, one of the waitress... Um, spilt coffee on a really expensive tie. And she'd said, I just needed to come in with the dry cleaning. And I'd be like, do you know what waitress it was? And he'd go like that and he'd be like, Alice or something. She'd go, oh yeah, that's the one. He'd be like, she's not on shift today. So he'd get the manager of the cafe to write out a dry cleaning bill of nine pounds, a check, right? So where am I going with this? So most <laughs> most managers would just think, oh God, you're tight, get, all right, I'll write a dry cleaning bill of nine pounds. There you go. So they'd write nine pounds. But when you used to write a check out, yeah. Know, he used to put an extra zero in, so it'd be ninety pounds. And then when you write nine, he'd put a T Y on it, so it'd be ninety. And he used to go around cafes in London. Well, you that. could do that with an eight. Eighty pounds. Or seven. Nine is more than eight, William. Why would you do an eight if you could do yeah. nine? Ninety. Because one hundred. Right. So and he he made a foot. He made, made thousands off it. That's what it's really. So you could do that. Well, don't do Are that. you calling Dr. Max a hustler? No, because nobody has checks these days. Do you remember getting your first checkbook? I think I've still got mine somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you ever, have you ever had a check that's bounced? No. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. You probably, you probably have. Does anyone else remember? I don't know where I was going with that. That just reminds me of a dry cleaning bill. Stephen Malone owns me money for name drop for dry cleaning bill. Does he? Remember when I did that thing when they came into the studio and I put my face yes. in the cake? 
So I had takeaway on our yeah. dares. I got cake all down me cash, not cashmere. <laughs> I got cake all down me. Um, Corduroy. No. What is up with me today? I can't think it. Shape. Yeah, what one? What? Yeah. No. No like, hair. The one that's like suede. Suede. Oh, I got dry cleaned. And he said, sort them. I never did. Anyway, what's your advice? Um, I, I think you... I think moving means, I don't know, I, I kind of, I mean, Dr. Max, you presumably are off this train. You're not sitting there still waiting for our advice, sitting, <laughs> saying to the person opposite, you can't move. Um, yeah, I, I would just style it out. You've offered to pay. You've done everything you possibly could. It's a funny story. We've had a bit of a laugh about it, but I wouldn't worry too much. My about top it. advice, and please, Gene Devers, I cannot stress this enough, shout wet wipes. I, I, I take them everywhere with me. Mm. I was introduced to shout wet wipes. If, like me, you slop all down your yeah, and you're out for the day, especially coffee, it's, you know, shout the stain remover. Yep. They do little wet wipes. And I, there's fun. if you get slops down here, yeah, just get one of them out, put it on your shirt, give it a wipe, it'll come out. So if you had shout yeah, wet wipes. Then you've wipes, got a wet patch on you. Yeah, but it dries. Shout right. wet wipes. Invest in them. Okay. Right? Hopefully they'll send some out. Addresses on the website. Shout wet wipes. You want to take them with you. They're great. Just have them in your purse, in your pocket, in your... In your man bag. In your handbag, your man bag. Your, your bum bag. In your bum bag. Your fanny pack. Your fanny pack. Your fanny, whatever you want to do. Oh. <laughs> right, Is something to that. shout about? How does dry cleaning work? Ben's just asked... How does dry cleaning right. work? No, How does dry cleaning work? Right, you take your garment into the shop and yeah, you but say... No, that's a good point, but actually. I, was, I read that letter and I was like, like wet, wet, wet makes sense because it washes it out. So within your... Is it a steamer? When you, yeah, no, that's a it's, so when it's, you it's a chemical some, clean. When you take something to get dry cleaned, what did he do? Well, they put it in a special machine and, and clean it in a in a way that you wouldn't can clean in a normal wash. But if you oh. look at your labels on um, clothes, let me just look mm. here... Yes, yeah, so this one, you see the circle. So the circle is always about dry cleaning. Yeah. And this circle has an X through it, which means this cannot be dry cleaned. Oh. Okay, this is just a wool sort of half zip I'm wearing. But if it had a circle with a P or a C in it, then the P or the C means it can be dry cleaned, but the P or the C is telling the dry cleaner which type of chemical. Oh. Basically, they're in effect too. I mean, I think it's a bit more complicated than that, but I'm boiling it down. Which type of chemical... Why are they boiling it? No, they're... <laughs> Don't do that forever. <laughs> Don't boil the jump. Um, yeah, which chemical they should use to clean it. Hear me out, because I've got stuff that is in a wash basket and needs hand washing. How do you hand wash? Does your washing machine have a hand wash setting? I don't think so. Right, well then take it to the dry cleaners, I would. But is, you... is the easiest answer to that. So what would you hand, how would you hand you wash You would it? need to go and buy things like Woolite or some sort of... Go into the... Right, I've heard enough. Thank you. Yeah, I got And you me. wash it by hand. Yeah. And you wring it out by hand. I've you done have that a on holiday when I run out of skiddies and stuff. Boxes. Yep. Yeah, I know. Thank have you. Have you ever washed your boxes in? The... No. When you go on holiday? I no. did it recently in Skeggy. Really? <laughs> yeah, I had to wash them and then put them on balcony. They don't have dry cleaning in the hotel. Mm, they or did laundry. Actually, but I'm not paying for that. It's a right rip off. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah, anyway. Just give them a. All you need is a bit of soap and just rub it in with your knuckles. Get all the skid marks out. Oh! You're <laughs> making me feel so ill. I'm joking. I'm joking. Right, this is from Louise, double D. Uh, dear William Jordan and PB, thank you all for keeping me entertained with your podcast. I'm a relatively new listener and have been enjoying some of your back catalogue. Oh. My question is an etiquette one for you, William. My husband occasionally likes to hold his knife like a pencil. I have a real issue with this, as I believe it to be common. Is this true? And is it ever correct to hold your knife like a pencil? Kind regards, Louise DD. Uh, this makes sense now. So Ben said, please could I come armed with some knives? Oh, okay. oh God. I thought maybe, oh God, he's, he's, he's on one. Oh, please, please note the tea towel. Jesus, look at that knife. That's such a fancy knife. Did I have that when I came to... Yes. Yeah, they're really noticing. hard to cut into. That's a butter knife, isn't it? No, that's not a butter knife. Is it not? No, that is a fish knife. So, you hold a knife... I didn't know which knife you wanted. Is the knife in the left hand? Even no, left conventionally hand? it's in the right hand. But well, I put mine in my left hand. Yeah. Right, hang on. No, actually, I'd put it in my right. I would... So how would you... I'd hold it like that. Well, that's sort of right, but we can modify that. Okay, how would you hold so it? So your finger... Okay, so people sometimes people do hold their knives like pens, which is incorrect. Like that? Yeah. You wouldn't hold a pen like a knife, so why are you holding a knife like well, a pen? Well, does it matter as long as they're eating 
Well, I'll tell you what, there's a reason why we hold knives in a certain way, because then we have as then we have the best control over the of course Jordan can see his reflection in the knife, so we've completely lost him now for this section. Um as if. Right. So look, you see my index you see my index finger? Yeah. It's going to stop where the blade and the handle meet. The, it, on this particular knife, there's a lovely little ridge. Okay? What if they're from World Coast? There probably still will be a ridge okay. where the blade and the handle meet. Okay? The, the handle is tucked into the fleshy part of my hand. I don't want to see it sticking out. Still got my knife and fox hat from Wilkinson. Lovely. Uh, and we want a nice flat finger. As my colleague Micah says, we don't have a McDonald's oh. arch. We have a nice flat finger. Okay? Let like so. Go. Yeah, like that. No, but that's on the actual blade, where the blade and the uh, handle meet, and tuck that in there, and then keep keep your elbow tucked in, and no, you're eating like a dinosaur, so with your, yeah, wrist slow. I need, right, pretend that's a foot. Okay. There. Yes. Very nice. Same for that one. Well, f so f I've brought a fish knife as well, conveniently. Fish knives are held in exactly the same way, finger going down, stopping just before the, the sort of the knife gets thicker. And then you would sort of just, if you were filleting the fish, you just turn your wrist and fillet the chunks off. But most fish now are served off the bone anyway, so you don't really need a fish knife. Okay. Um, but yes, question? Louise, it is a bit common to hold your knife like a pet, basically. So and there's no way of sugarcoating that. It is. Okay. But he's within his rights to do it, but I'm within my rights to say he's common. Mm -hmm.